it's the worst part of uh, of the event when I have to ask myself uh, to give a presentation, and I try to share you some slides. You may know that I'm uh, extremely uh, technophobe, uh, but I do my best to to share slides. So, well, let me start with a uh, with a personal story. A decade ago. An old pastor of the Reformed Church, who was my neighbor at that time, uh, recalled the story. Uh, at the end of the World War, when Soviet troops invaded Hungary, he served at a, uh, in a congregation at the Alt district of Budapest, and uh, he called the congregation uh, to pray. Uh, the Hungarian soldiers were not very satisfied with that, and uh, they forced them rather to go to the barricade and to fight instead of praying. But this pastor replied that uh, that time praying was more useful uh, than to fight. Uh, the prayer proved to be successful because the Red Army miraculously bypassed the district and uh, didn't go through. However, some millenniums ago, uh, we read in the book of the Maccabees that they faced quite a similar dilemma. Uh, the question was if they should defend themselves if they are attacked on the seventh day. Uh, we read as follows. If we all do as our brothers have done and refuse to fight the Gentiles for our lives and institutions, they will only destroy us the sooner from the earth. So then and there, they came to this decision. If anyone attacks us on the Sabbath day, whoever he may be, we shall resist him. We must not all be killed as our brothers were in the hiding places. So they concluded they should rather fight instead of worshiping the seventh day. If you, uh, if you say that fighting in a war is a general rule, that is a wise, wise thing to do, then you see that freedom of religion may conflict with the general rule. And we don't have a general answer whether to pray or fight. God's plan seems to be more complicated. And I know that we understand God's plan only by grace, but as a scholar, I, you know, we need to find a theoretical answer how freedom of religion relates to the general rule which is to fight in this respect. So why dealing with this vaccination issue? Uh, this issue is very slippery and emotional. Some say that vaccination is our only chance to save our lives and health. And uh, they are keen on having the vaccine as uh, soon as possible. Some others uh, are rather skeptic and uh, they are more hesitant uh, to vaccination. Uh, some of the uh, vaccine hesitant people have uh, uh, rational reasons, so they would like to learn more about uh, uh, the vaccines. Uh, but some others rather rely on conspiracy theories. So they think of that vaccination is uh, small UFOs in our blood, or the, this is the conspiracy of high-tech giants to control us. Um, the common thing is that either you are vaccine hesitant or vaccine optimistic, um, you don't have a rational reason. The debate is out of the rational discussion. discussion. Uh, moreover, the issue has a social impact. So the debate either being vaccine hesitant or vaccine optimist uh, divides the society, the communities, it may break friendship, it ruins good neighborhoods and so on. And it's not just the quarrel over the vaccination, uh, let's say that uh, there is a group of people uh, who are good friends or uh, uh, participants of a, a members of a congregation and they would like to go on holiday for a couple of days 
And if two or three are not vaccined, it's a, it's a big dilemma whether to go without them because they cannot join the group because they don't have a vaccination ID or uh, everyone uh, should stay at home and not going anywhere because of the three people who are not vaccinated. So it's not just about being healthy or not being healthy, but it has a, a, a social impact. And uh, we also need to add that the debate over vaccination is very impartial. So in public media and in, in discussions, uh, those who are uh, anti-vaccine, uh, they are uh, produce this insane. So it's it's a conspiracy theory that's not worth dealing with them. And of course, uh, those who know Hungarians, uh, the Hungarian situation well, they know that politics is everywhere. Politics is involved to vaccination campaign. So the opponent, uh, opposition say uh, that uh, because of bad vaccination policy, uh, too many people have died and they say that not all the vaccines are uh, satisfactory. Uh, While well, the government says that uh, uh, the opposition is against vaccination and they ruin the government's good plan of uh, vaccinate everyone. So, and if politics is involved, uh, this um, uh, results uh, less and less confidence uh, in the people. And as a scholar, I believe uh, that we should examine even slippery issues in a theoretical way and try to find a rational answer for some questions. So, I aim at evaluating. Uh, uh, only the constitutional perspectives as emotionless as possible. Uh, and I also need to admit that I'm at the beginning of this research and by now I have more questions than answers. So I'm looking forward to the debate and I hope that I will learn a lot from you. If you want to analyze such a, a slippery issue, you need to find solid standpoints. First one, I think that uh, vaccination is helpful. Uh, doctors of social science should rely medical doctors. Uh, we as lawyers are not about to evaluate how, uh, how efficient uh, different vaccines are. So let's accept that they are helpful and leave this debate uh, for, um, for doctors. And so I uh, accept that uh, vaccines help preventing uh, of being infected and they also reduce uh, the possible symptoms if I'm still uh, infected of COVID. Here, let me uh, explain you my uh, personal situation. After having received the first dose of, uh, of Pfizer, I caught COVID. And I asked the doctors if uh, I will receive the second dose uh, at the time uh, I was originally supposed to. And three doctors, all highly esteemed, uh, gave me three different answers. One of them uh, told me I was to uh, given the vaccination the original time. The other one uh, told me that I have to wait uh, two or three months uh, for the second dose. And the third one uh, told me that in this situation, I'm not given the, uh, the second dose. Uh, interestingly, uh, this raised uh, my uh, confidence in vaccines. Because if all say the same, this means that uh, it's, it's pointless. They read uh, uh, some, they, they want to provide the general answer. But if it is an open debate in a, uh, in a field of science, I believe them much more. So 
the mere fact that uh, their answer was various uh, raised my confidence in vaccination. Uh, secondly, another starting point is that uh, vaccination has a close link uh, with uh, uh, freedom of conscience. Uh, you must not neglect uh, personal beliefs. Uh, especially Christians know well that at the end of human history, the time will come when no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark of the beast, as John described in Revelations. I don't say that vaccination card is the sign of the beast, but you have to be very careful when the participation in economic life is linked to a specific mark. So uh, freedom of conscience is uh, also a very uh, hard issue and you need to analyze the case very carefully. Many say, even uh, courts say, that freedom of religion has no relevance in this respect because uh, constitutional right is not enough to make exemptions from the general rule because a specific law overrules freedom of religion. I find this argument very dangerous because if you consider that a constitutional right prevails only in the frame of law, this means that uh, the constitutional right is what the act of parliament says it is which means that you don't need the constitution because uh, it's simply, uh, they are simply the act of, acts of parliament who describe uh, the content of a constitutional right. And from that on, the constitution is perfectly useless. So in my presentation, I first speak of some words uh, why COVID uh, vaccination is so unique in a constitutional sense. Uh, secondly, I analyze uh, a previous decision of the Constitutional Court, which was in 2007. And up till now, uh, this is the only vaccination decision of the Hungarian Constitutional Court. Uh, thirdly, I compare the present situation to the previous one, uh, to the case of uh, 2007. And finally, I intend to draw some conclusions. In Hungary, just as in most of the countries, I think all of the countries, COVID vaccination is technically voluntary. So you are free to decide uh, whether to accept the vaccine or not. Uh, in legal terms, you are not obliged uh, to be vaccinated. In this sense, it's, you may say that it's very much like uh, the seasonal influenza vaccination. Uh, every year, uh, people are offered uh, the, the vaccine against flu. And many people take the vaccine, many don't take the vaccine. Uh, but there are two uh, very important uh, differences. First, um, uh, it's not a social issue. So people are not about to debate among themselves whether to take the vaccine against flu or not. While uh, uh, as for the COVID vaccine, that is, it is very much a social issue. So I, as I mentioned, it breaks uh, relationships. And secondly, uh, influenza vaccination is just about your health. If you believe it makes you healthy, it uh, stays, uh, it keeps the flu away, then you take the vaccine and it's up to your decision. But nothing happens uh, if you don't take the, uh, the vaccine. Uh, you may get infected with flu, but that's all. So, uh, but in the case of COVID vaccination, there are many services, facilities that are connected to, uh, uh, to be vaccinated. 
I, I, I need to admit that uh, mandatory vaccination is constitutionally accepted worldwide. So it's, it's not really a, a constitutional issue. Most uh, countries, courts, constitutional courts, accept that uh, the law obliges you to be uh, vaccinated. Actually, I find some statistics that say that uh, Hungary is the country with the most mandatory uh, vaccinations. And also in all Europe, whole Europe, we have the highest fines for not being vaccinated with mandatory vaccinations. So uh, Hungary takes this issue uh, very serious. Um, now many uh, refer to the century old uh, US Supreme Court decision on Jacobson versus Massachusetts. And uh, there, and well, the interpretation of the decision is also varies, uh, but um, uh, many people agree that practically the legislator has a blank check uh, to decide on mandatory vaccinations. Uh, but according to the statistics I found, probably Professor Streng will correct me, but all states grant medical exemptions from uh, vaccines. 45 states and Washington DC grant religious exemption and 15 states allow philosophical exemptions. What is the situation in Hungary? In uh, Hungary, uh, COVID vaccination, as I mentioned, is not mandatory, it's voluntary. And, uh, but if you uh, are vaccinated or you, have, you, uh, you were infected with COVID, which means that you have a valid positive uh, COVID test, then you receive a vaccination card after uh, the first dose uh, of the vaccine was given. And this vaccination card is the criterion of participating at many fields of social life. So you can go to indoor restaurants, to zoos, to hotels, and uh, many things, if you have a, a vaccination card. Interestingly, uh, the vaccination card does not serve identification, so your image is not on the card, which means that you also have to show your passport, ID, driving license, whatever, uh, so that they can check that it's you. It also raises privacy issues, but I'm not about uh, to discuss uh, privacy issues. I'm just inter I'm interested in uh, its relation with uh, freedom of conscience. So I may say that uh, COVID vaccination is semi-mandatory. Formally, it's not required, but practically, you cannot live full life uh, without that. Uh, and it's also interesting that uh, uh, sometimes a non-mandatory vaccination has more severe consequences. So if I refuse the vaccine for tuberculosis, which is a mandatory one, uh, I am fined. But if I refuse COVID vaccine, I'm practically out of society. Uh, so I, I wouldn't say that a non-mandatory vaccination is always more severe than uh, a mandatory one. Uh, so considering the Hungarian experience, uh, many took the vaccine because um, they thought it saved their lives. Uh, many refused the vaccine either for theoretical purposes or they were afraid of some conspiracy. And there are also many who didn't really who didn't really believe that the vaccine would help, but they thought they were blackmailed. And if they don't take it, they are out of uh, society. So it just it occurred one hour ago, I read on the news that uh, the spokesperson for the government says, well, uh, the COVID pandemic is over 
for those who are vaccinated, which means that there's a big distinction between people who are vaccinated and who are not vaccinated. Of course, uh, the virus itself does not know if you are vaccinated because feeling blackmailed or because you want to save your health. Uh, uh, in, for the virus, it's all the same. But it has a very important social relevance. So let's see, uh, let's move to the decision I mentioned. It, it occurred in uh, 2007. And the background of the case was that uh, there were parents who didn't want to have their child vaccinated. And uh, they filed a petition to the Constitutional Court challenging the piece of legislation that obliged them to have their child vaccinated. And they referred to many things including uh, freedom of religion. And that was the first uh, uh, decision or first time of Hungarian jurisprudence when the court uh, used uh, the comparative test of burdens. Uh, this test is originated in uh, the doctrine of the Strasbourg court, but here it uh, proved also uh, efficient. I'm not about to uh, read the whole paragraph on the comparative test of burdens, but I rather summarize it in one sentence. It, the, the key point of uh, the test is that you cannot say that you need to obey the general rule every time irrespective to everything. There must be some exceptions. On the other hand, you cannot say it either that all personal beliefs, convictions are uh, legitimate grounds for not obeying uh, the general rule. So there must be some balancing between obeying the general rule and making exemptions. And the test has two elements. Uh, upon which you can decide whether to uh, favorize the general rule or to make exemptions. Firstly, how close uh, the behavior is to conviction. The closer it is to conviction, the more likely that uh, you should be exempt. And secondly, if the exemption affects others or not, the more people are involved, the more it is, uh, uh, the more it influences outsiders, the less likely uh, you are exempt. And uh, the, the decision also declared that the state should allow alternative rules of conduct within reasonable limits. And uh, all in all, uh, the Constitutional Court uh, uh, rejected the petition. Uh, it said that the piece of legislation did not infringe the parents' uh, freedom of religion, but uh, they respected that the parents had the opportunity of alternative rules of conduct, which meant in that case that uh, uh, they, uh, they got um, uh, a vaccine on their own expense uh, that was not against their conviction and the child was vaccinated with that particular, uh, uh, with that particular uh, vaccine uh, and finally everyone was happy. So what is this uh, situation now, if we compare the mandatory vaccination that was decided uh, some 15 years ago and the present COVID vaccination? Uh, the first uh, aspect is beyond constitutionalism, that is social relevance. Uh, the obligatory child vaccination has little social relevance. 
every year there are five or six people who don't want their child to uh, have uh, vaccinated, but they don't really cause trouble because of uh, the small number of people uh, refusing uh, vaccination. Uh, the more people are affected, uh, the, greater so, uh, the greater is the social relevance. And as for COVID vaccination, there's a big relevance because everyone speak, speaks of uh, vaccination. And it's not just five or six people who refuse the vaccination, but much more. Uh, and this uh, is not only a social issue, but it also has an impact to constitutional law. Secondly, uh, uh, in the previous case, the, mandatory, uh, the vaccination was mandatory. Here, uh, the vaccination is legally not mandatory. Uh, it's, I called it semi-mandatory. It's also an important uh, element that uh, uh, the previous case uh, was about children who could not decide on their own. It was their parents who decided instead of the children. So it's not about self-determination. They couldn't decide on their own because they were so little. Here, the vaccination is about adults. So everyone decides whether to take uh, the vaccine or not. So uh, my decision to take COVID vaccination is, uh, is of my self-determination. Uh, and uh, if it is not about self-determination, that is an argument in favor not make ex exemptions of the general rule because it's not about you, it's about uh, your children. There's a great, uh, there, uh, another question if it, uh, and one element of the test, if it uh, pertains to uh, freedom of uh, conscience. And the answer is yes, in both cases. And I find, that uh, the more rational debate, the more rational debate is over vaccination, the less space remains for supernatural issues. So if I speak of, uh, 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 if I conduct a rational debate, what are uh, the advantages, what are the disadvantages and so on, an honest rational debate would help making a rational decision and as a scholar, I would like to conclude to a rational decision. And uh, I don't say that there's no space for conscience because there's conscience everywhere. But if you uh, succeed to convince people, their conscience will accommodate uh, the general rule and it wouldn't raise uh, too big questions. As long as uh, you say that, as the debate we have now, over vaccination, that you are right, no, I am right, and no, you, I am. This, this doesn't lead anywhere. It's also an important question: uh, how it, uh, what is the effect on others? So, if it influences, uh, uh, if it influences other people, and uh, here we also must rely on medical doctors, because if vaccination helps uh, uh, helps me not being infected, so I am saved. This means that it had that, that the vaccine has a great impact on other people because if I am not infected, I cannot spread the virus and I don't think and I don't infect others. So in this case, uh, my decision of being vaccinated or not influences others to a, a great, uh, extent. On the contrary, if I still uh, can uh, catch COVID, but my symptoms are, are, are weaker, but I can uh, spread the virus anyway, and I can infect others, I don't 
say, I don't see how my decision influences others because it uh, is only about me, about my symptoms. So the question is, and it's a medical issue, I'm not about to decide it, if I can spread the virus despite of uh, being vaccinated. If the answer is no, there's a great impact on others. If the answer is yes, there's a smaller impact on others. And uh, the other question is, if the law uh, uh, accepts alternative uh, uh, behavior, and what we see at the case of COVID vaccination, that the answer is no. The vaccination card is linked to uh, uh, of, of vaccination, obviously, or validated COVID test. So even if I have negative PCR tests or, or was in quarantine for two weeks, uh, this doesn't help me going to movie or whatever. So I don't see the possibility for alternative uh, behavior. So I jump to my conclusions. Uh, first and most of all, I conclude that COVID vaccination should be a scientific issue and politics should step aside. And uh, the question uh, how useful COVID vaccination is, that is the question for doctors. And uh, the question if uh, how it influences uh, the society is the question of doctors of social science. Uh, secondly, uh, freedom of conscience must be considered and uh, we must admit, we must accept that individual beliefs uh, differ. And um, uh, my point is that uh, if we have uh, rational debate on uh, vaccination, that would help others uh, to be convinced that uh, this is okay and there's no conspiracy uh, theory beyond. The key question and uh, the, well, the most difficult part, if a mandatory COVID vaccination would be constitutional, my answer is yes. So I would say that if, uh, if the law would require everyone to be vaccinated, now I don't see uh, any constitutional obstacle for that. But I would say that uh, by now it's socially dangerous because people are not all convinced that uh, vaccination is helpful. And uh, the restrictions, I mean, uh, the possibilities of services and facilities should be linked of being healthy and not uh, uh, the question if you have a vaccination card. Uh, so the law should uh, accept alternative uh, attitude. So what if I have the money to have PCR tests every three days? Why, why couldn't I live with that? Uh, now I don't see the point. And, uh, uh, and all restrictions, uh, all services that are linked to uh, vaccination card or being healthy should meet uh, the necessary and proportionate test. And only those services can be uh, limited to uh, vaccinated people. Uh, which are necessary and if uh, the restriction is proportionate. But most of all, uh, I believe that the way is neither mandating or uh, blackmailing, but raising vaccine confidence. Thank you very much for your kind attendance.